it's amazing how well I'm listened to. Everybody listens to what I say. <laughs> so I'll just uh, start by introducing the panel. You have their bios in the program, so I won't go through their bios. Uh, so immediately, uh, are you on my left? I guess you're on my left, is Carol Ann Brown. Next to her is Paul Clark. And uh, third person is Heather Campbell. Uh, so this is the panel. It's the Low Carbon In Innovation and Alliance panel. Thank you. We as an organization, as Alberta Innovates Energy and Environment Solutions, have been very pleased to be part of the Low Carbon Innovation Alliance since its inception. I can't remember how long ago it was, but it was longer than uh, we wanted to be. So um, frankly, we cannot achieve our goals of GHG reductions without working together and without making things happen in a collaborative manner. So we need to be reaching to others, and uh, this is a, a neat idea that has come together with a number of organizations talking about what is our low carbon future going to look like. Uh, I believe this is a go big or go home moment. Uh, the panelists are going to tell you how we're going to go big, hopefully. Um, and. Uh, really reach uh, the carbon innovation goals that uh, we've set for ourselves. So before uh, we ask questions to the panel, I'm just gonna ask Carol Ann Brown to come and give us a little lowdown on what the LCIA is all about. Thank you, Eddie. Um, so thank you for inviting me to do this. Let's see if we got this right. I'm going to give you uh, a high-level view of um, the Low Carbon Innovation Alliance, which henceforth I will call the LCIA, to save some time. Um, uh, who's involved? What some vision and mission ideas have been in the group that's uh, been participating so far? What we've been up to, where we want to go, um, and the purpose of being here, as Eddie alluded to, is um, uh, we're looking to bring more people under the tent. Because if, uh, if we were playing collective bingo today, um, other than uh, AIES uh, being a, a repeated word, we, we hear partnership and collaborating uh, and collaboration again and again and again. And so that's really the name of the game here. And that's why the LCIA exists. So. Uh, the founding members include all of these organizations, and this is alphabetical because otherwise I never, I never remember all of them. So Alberta Innovates Energy Environment Solutions, Tech Futures, the Canada, Canada's All Sands Innovation Alliance, the Climate Change Emissions Management Corporation, uh, CMC Research Institutes, um, some of you might have known its uh, first iteration, Carbon Management Canada. Natural Resources Canada and Sustainable Development Technology Canada. And I'm gonna embarrass my colleagues and ask all of you who are in these organizations that touch the LCAA to please stand up so that we can identify you. Um, and uh, later on when we have a networking section, if you wanna have a chat with LCAA members, you can stand up, as, you can come find them. Here are our LCAA members that uh, come you can answer some questions, ask them some questions, and they'll have some answers for you. Thank you so much, everyone, for indulging me. <laughs> so um, I will call these a little bit draft, because what we've recognized uh, within the membership right now is that here's where we think we should go. Um, but uh, we are looking to have others join us in this uh, journey and therefore it's not fully baked because we other other people probably have things that are valuable to add and need to own this as well so I call them draft for now so our vision that Canada drives large-scale GHG reductions through accelerated innovation 
And our mission to achieve that is to accelerate the deployment of low carbon solutions through collaboration. So notice I didn't just say technologies there because it's not just technologies that achieve innovation. So what is our focus? How do we do this? Well, as you've seen today, and as you know from these organizations, the members already you know, identify, they test, they develop, they deploy, they commercialize technologies and other solutions to go towards a low carbon future. Collectively, the idea is to leverage and align low carbon technology investments and solutions that support economic diversification and development. So some activities we've done together uh, include the CCMC Grand Challenge, a uh, call for technology descriptions last year, um, a bit of a tech brief that you'll be able to see soon. But really what the LCA that I've seen has done, pardon me for doing that, um, uh, is uh, it's really increased uh, bilateral member um, activities. So collectively we managed to do some stuff together, but really the, the, the higher touch points, the collisions, the times that they, they connect has increased through the LCIA. Um, and to show that, we have this diagram, which we've tried to keep simple. And the idea is that, you know, in the, fun, the innovation funnel, a lot of things get thrown in at the very early stages, and they go through a process, and eventually we have some solutions coming out that get deployed in our economy. And the Low Carbon Innovation Alliance members play in this area, as many of you do as well, in different ways. And so we have the, the dark bars really show where there's a large focus, and the striped bars showing where um, there's some involvement, maybe not the, the biggest concentration of activities. What I want to touch on really quickly is that um, they, as you saw earlier today on various presentations, the members already work together in a number of these areas. So uh, as you saw, Alberta Innovates uh, works with all of these organizations on a number of different projects. An interesting one that was noted earlier was the molten carbonate fuel cell one, where AES is working with COSIA member companies and others to move um, uh, up technology from an earlier stage and driving it towards um, commercialization. Similarly, AITF uh, has been working on projects with other members, including with Carbon Management Canada on uh, a waste energy mapping process and other projects as well. SDTC over here, um, as you can see, co-funds with CCMC, uh, not together in a, in a necessarily deliberate fashion, but it's funding the same projects as CCMC, but it also is bringing its internal expertise on project evaluation to help out on COSIA initiatives and on the CCMC Grand Challenge. Natural Resources Canada is working on partial upgrading with AES. Um, COSIA is involved in a number of the projects that you've seen uh, uh, talked about today. So um, there's much more going on, but they already work together. The point of the LCIA is to be able to do more than that in order to accelerate towards a low carbon future for Canada. And expanding the membership is how we think we need to go in order to do that. So really uh, seven organizations, two of them national in scope, five of them uh, based in Alberta. Uh, we think there's more we can do in the province and regionally, which is why we're reaching out today to tell you a bit about ourselves and to invite you to come talk to us. Um, but also that there's a recognition of a national gap. All of the jurisdictions in Canada have their unique challenges and their innovation systems are, are really bent to help try to focus on that. But we share common challenges and surely by working together in a collaborative and coordinated system, Canada could really accelerate moving towards low carbon future by sharing information and leveraging capabilities and resources, by really looking at what are our gaps and what are our opportunities, by prioritizing action on those, and by elevating the level of support for low carbon initiatives. So um, we're gonna be answering some questions. Uh, we'll be available later on uh, as well to um, 
to ha answer any questions you have, I will stop there and give the floor back to Eddie. So I'm just the moderator. They get the hard questions. Uh, so the, the first question, and we'll also entertain some questions from the audience, so think about some questions there as well. Uh, the first question really has to do with the value proposition. And uh, we're going to start with Paul, if that's OK. Uh, and Paul is here representing, as Eric mentioned, the Climate Change and Emission Management Corporation. And the question is, is what's the value proposition for the CCMC and to be part of the Low Carbon Innovation Alliance. Great, Th <clears throat> thanks Eddie. Um, I'm gonna assume that most of you know uh, about CCEMC as, a, as an organization. Uh, we are the uh, stewards of the uh, CCEM fund, which is comprised of the uh, levy of $15 a ton applied to exceedances of large scale emitters. Um, what that represents uh, to date is uh, a fund that over five years is now amassed to the, and we've uh, dispensed with uh, $350 million worth of uh, levy funding given to us by the government to administer. We are a, a standalone organization and uh, I represent uh, uh, the board. Um, to date, as I say, we have invested $350 million in 109 projects, and our intent here is to uh, fund projects that uh, create uh, transformative technology to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. To get to the value proposition of LCIA, one of our discoveries before LCIA was that there was tremendous leveraging going on with our funding, and uh, it really... Uh, blew me away that uh, we have leveraged that $350 million of funding into a uh, value of $2.2 billion. And that gave, uh, gave us an early feel for the power of what I call uh, leveraging. And it drove us to uh, look at, uh, can we extend that leveraging concept? And Eddie, I think to me the value proposition is that uh, LCA offers a golden opportunity to uh, um, create leveraging. Uh, we feel that uh, there are a number of challenges here in terms of bringing uh, uh, transformative technology to commercial reality and one of the big uh, challenge areas is uh, uh, large-scale demonstration of technologies. We're in a very large-scale industry in total and we're not just talking uh, oil sands here, we're talking all of the major industries uh, in the province and beyond and uh, we have the heft to uh, provide the type of funding needed to demonstrate uh, large-scale uh, technologies. Uh, the other values that uh, uh, LCA brings to an organization like CCEMC is what I call the ability to gather in a forum setting to talk to our colleagues uh, in, the, uh, in this space, learn what they're doing, uh, uh, share information uh, and see how we can, I think uh, Caroline mentioned this, uh, the ability to accelerate the pace of, of technology development. Can we remove barriers, deal with gaps, uh, this type of thing. And it's our belief from a CCEMC perspective that no one player can do this alone. Uh, we need to work collaboratively here. The, 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 the size of the challenge and the size of the ultimate prize is way bigger than any one organization and it's through the power of combining uh, that we can get to the, uh, the destination. Thanks, Paul. Uh, the next question, well, I'm gonna ask the same question to Heather, uh, but first, uh, Heather, why does a federal agency like SDGC wanna mess around with a bunch of Alberta uh, organizations? Uh, <laughs> And, yeah. <laughs> and what's the value proposition for SDTC, uh, Heather? Uh, what do you mean? Like messing around is a bad thing, Eddie. Um, uh, it, when you look at it, it's, it's, this is not, climate change is not an Alberta problem. Um, it no. is a global problem and, uh, and a challenge that uh, I think we're all well positioned to meet. Um, with LCIA, we have the opportunity accelerate um, our solution creation and uh, deliver, deliver interesting opportunities. So SDTC, Sustainable Development Technology Canada, everybody knows now why we call it SDTC, of course, um, is um, a federal, a federal um, uh, third-party not-for-profit foundation. Um, we receive our capitalization from the federal government through Natural Resources Canada and Environment Canada. Uh, we manage just under a billion for about 13 years and we've dispensed 
sense, just, just under 800 million and I think to about just over 300 projects. Um, those projects, as I mentioned earlier, are expected to deliver uh, a tangible environmental benefit. So thinking about some of the objectives um, that Eddie and his team have before you on the placemats around uh, emissions reductions and water and clean air and land and soil, um, those are the Some would say dysfunctional, but um, I, <laughs> as any good family is, I believe, <laughs> um, there's a little bit of dysfunction just makes you interesting. Um, it makes the family pictures a little more, a little more fun. Um, I think that uh, there's, a, there's a natural alignment between our mandate as SBTC and the work that we're doing and the hope um, for, S for LCIA um, in terms of low carbon economy and delivering uh, those tangible environmental solutions. Um, there's more in the low carbon economy than just, than just energy. Um, and again, coming back to uh, some of the comments that Warren and Donna made, we need to see ourselves differently. Um, there's always an opportunity for us, and I think the win from an SCTC perspective is if we can have a technology that was developed for another sector, uh, perhaps for aerospace that's applied in fugitive, fugitive emissions monitoring, um, that's a win. Besides the fact that we are a three or four letter act, five letter acronym, clearly that's what you need to do to be in this club. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good club to be in. <laughs> um, Carol Ann, the question for you is, um, if we're having an energy transition, and I think we believe we're having an energy transition, how can LCA tackle this transition? And I'm combining another question which is what should the focus be? Sure. Um, so uh, I will also um, leverage off of Warren McDonald because uh, I think that, uh, that it, especially in this town uh, where we're so energy focused, that if we think about an energy transition, we might view that as a threat. And I think if we change our perception of it and we look at the opportunities that then we'd be positioning ourselves properly. That doesn't mean that tomorrow we won't be driving our cars with gasoline in them. Um, but if we look longer term and we agree that uh, we want uh, sustainable prosperity as the, uh, the result of our actions, then let's look at the opportunities. Let's look at what we can do to get there and using our current strengths and abilities and natural resources to get ourselves there. So what should we focus on? Well, we should focus on the gaps. Uh, we should focus on what's not necessarily well covered by individual organizations and how do we uh, work together to, to um, address those gaps. Let's focus on um, what are some priorities amongst those. What's more important to do now? Uh, what do we do next after that? Um, let's focus on um, what are the things that uh, are too big, too expensive, don't have the right components from individual organizations? What do we need to do together that we can't do on our own? Um, and I, that includes a national scale for me. I think uh, Alberta has tremendous resources, human, natural, um, you know, capital, all across the board. But we're in this together, I think, for the long haul. Thanks. Thanks. Paul. How many organizations do we already have? Uh, everybody tells me we have too many organizations. We need to merge everybody together. Um, do we need one more organization called LCIA? I knew you'd ask me that one, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> I think the key to answering your question is, uh, and I spent time both in technology in my career, but I was also involved in business and marketing, and that is to seek out what I call unmet needs. And I'm going to put the hypothesis forward that LCIA meets an unmet need in this area of uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, reduction and the challenge to meet them. 
Uh, CCMC in its early stages of development, we've been in existence now since 2009. Once we had uh, formed and got comfortable with each other, we uh, went into a visioning strategy building uh, session, and Nettie well knows the power of vision and strategy building. And one of the uh, areas that uh, we explored, uh, uh, as I mentioned in my first remarks, is the power of leveraging, this idea that uh, we don't necessarily, we in this case being CCMC, necessarily have to do it all alone, nor should we, that's arrogant. Uh, and we explored this area of leveraging uh, deeply in this visioning work. And uh, we recognized uh, studying the field of who's playing in this big sandbox, uh, that there were a number of great organizations uh, with uh, great activities underway. And today we're having uh, tech talks, and you can just see what AIEES is doing. Uh, and they are a, a sister organization to CCMC. So we, we felt that uh, we should explore this area of leveraging and really buy into it and try to work with others. And uh, it became evident that uh, a, a, an expedient way to do that kind of leveraging is to truly join forces with the other key players in the sandbox. So we became one of the uh, founding members of the uh, LCIA, worked on its creation, saw the, and saw this unmet need. Because quite frankly, the other thing those of you in business out there would do, having sought out this type of opportunity to say, are there competition out there? Is somebody else doing this? And to the best of our knowledge, we cannot find a like organization, uh, certainly in Canada, but even beyond, because I've promoted this uh, in uh, other countries. Uh, there are a few of these types of organizations, LCA-type organizations, perhaps in Europe, but we don't see anything like it. And therefore, uh, being unique, and I think being worthy of pursuit, um, we uh, worked on creating uh, the setting. Um, the, um, and I think, you know, as we talked to the other of our colleagues, colleague organizations, uh, they had come to the same uh, realization. So, Eddie, I don't view this as yet another organization. Even though I'm semi-retired, uh, I don't need to be on a yet another organization. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Paul. Um, Heather, the next question is to you, and then we'll turn it over to the audience, although I do have uh, some more questions lined up. Uh, how will LCIA position itself as a national organization? So, I believe one of the things for LCIA, and I would say that it's something that's shared by the eight or nine organizations around the table right now, is that they're all clearly focused on making a significant contribution to Canada and, to a larger extent, the world's environmental performance with respect to climate change. Just full stop. There's a, you know, if you wanted to wear a badge, um, that would potentially be the badge. When I think about SDTC and our role and where the national ambition comes in and uh, being one of the two who has a focus outside of just Alberta, um, we have a broad portfolio of technologies in various stages of development across many clean technology sectors that are just at the edge of being positioned to deliver the objectives of a low carbon economy. Um, we're not producers as a third party not-for-profit foundation. Um, to have those technologies be adopted and be deployed and implemented by industry, you need to have that relationship and collaboration with those organizations. Um, you need to be meeting their needs, meeting those needs, um, sharing their, and sharing their problems, because I'm pretty sure that the majority of those industry members um, have that same passion around delivering that performance. Oh gosh, that was was that was that time. <laughs> Uh, delivering delivering that same environmental performance for Canada and the world, uh, and I guess there's not really beyond. <laughs> um, I think so many other jurisdictions share that same passion. Um, if I'm thinking about a national and opportunities, I think even uh, this week we can be encouraged by our Prime Minister Designate's invitation to all of the premiers to attend uh, COP21, the Conference of the Parties, and that will hopefully be a very visible demonstration of Canada's collective commitment to collaborative work together to achieve um, emissions targets. Uh, it's, I, think it's, I think we're working towards um, something that's um, very much uh, uh, a, passion, an, a passion plea um, as well as uh, a requirement for really strong collaboration to be achieved and um, you, you cannot do that in isolation effectively. Um, it, it's not like we're the only ones that generate electricity around here. Thank you. Uh, so are we going to go big, uh, Heather? Oh, go big or go home. 
Okay. So how are we going to how are we going to engage with industry and other participants? Well, um, uh, I, I did I did make the joke that you know you you had to have a, a an acronym to be a part, but um, that was really just a, a tease and a joke. Um, it, there's it has been it has been a set of sort of um, government ish. Uh, type organizations who have been a part of it, um, but the invitation is very open and welcome to industry, to other uh, collaborative partners, academia, um, whatever your stripe. Um, don't feel as though you have to be uh, boxed in and identified by some label. Um, it's a shared passion and an opportunity, uh, and an opportunity to work together and accelerate. Um, if you lack that particular. Um, that particular passion and drive and the need to figure out how to do those things more efficiently to, to deliver a low carbon economy, you might want to think twice. But um, if you've got that passion, we're, we're willing to have you um, speak with Carol Ann. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm opening up the questions to the floor for anybody that has questions. You'll have in your package, you'll see later on that we will be asking a quick question. Yes, please. Uh, hi, JT Steenkamp, Shell Canada. Um, relating to low carbon fuel standards, um, how are you involved strategically in planning related to that? And if not, uh, when you gauge in, gaze in the crystal ball, what do you see? Who's going to take that on? So it's related to low carbon fuel standards? make one comment I I would say that you'd probably there's probably an opportunity um, to see uh, dialogue and and commentary post uh, cop 21 and at the end of November coming out about that um, I think we're in a time of change and uh, really positive and um, exciting change um, provincially and federally um, that I think will lead to some renewed discussions on that. Um, I think it would be inappropriate to make assumptions about what that'll look like now. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll add a comment. <clears throat> One of the uh, observations that we've made uh, as LCIA, and it'll be interesting as this province uh, uh, unveils its new climate strategy, is uh, there's been an impression out there that the uh, difficulties that we've gotten into with climate change and greenhouse gas emissions is that this is an industry created problem and industry will solve this problem. And your question is an interesting one because in fact it is not. We'll see what happens in the next few days that it's a shared problem and certainly industry has a big role to play and through things, through organizations like CCEMC we're trying to play that role. But in the area of transportation for example, uh, infrastructure is another one, buildings and so on. So I think what's going to come out of uh, the new climate strategy is that we're all in this together and we all have to make a contribution. C uh, CCMC, and I speak for LCA, I think we will not touch every uh, spot on the horizon that has to deal with these areas, but uh, we'll certainly be supportive of a total approach to GHG reductions, including uh, lower, uh, you know, better fuel economies and, and, and the like. Any other questions? Okay. Yes, please. Hi. Glad to see you. Uh, Chris Stewart, Tello, CRA, SRED. Um, I'm just wondering about this talk of leveraging. Paul, you mentioned it, I think, Caroline and Heather. Um, my question really is, if all these uh, organizations have been in place for some time, could you give us a concrete example of how this collaboration is working? And the reason I'm asking this question is because, uh, again, back to the CO2 capture. A few years ago, I think it was Saks Power, uh, they had wanted to build a demonstration plant. I think it was uh, aiming technology to capture CO2. And my understanding is that that project couldn't go through because of funding. So if all these organizations are collaborating, my question is, how could that project not be funded? Chris, which uh, project are you referring to? The SAS Power. Oh, SAS Power. So that's, uh, so thanks for the question. Um, 
I think I'm, okay, perfect. So that that is funded. Um, so if I, in terms of concrete examples, um, I can say quite openly um, that SCTC has invested um, in uh, the in Aquastore, which is linked, of course, um, to to the Boundary Dam uh, CO2 capture facility. So. I think that's actually an interesting example of leverage where um, you're looking at one piece of the one piece of the operating envelope with respect to carbon capture and uh, in terms of organizations um, we may be looking at a potentially broader piece of the operating envelope but by doing those individual pieces and collaborating together um, that entire project is moving forward um, is actually working on a, a knowledge sharing uh, capacity at this moment in time and I believe has a conference coming up um, in the spring or the summer I, I'm not quite sure I can't I don't know exactly know the date um, where they'll actually be sharing uh, uh, data um, and results um, engineering engineering data as well um, globally uh, with partners okay yes I could add a few examples one uh, current and the other uh, pending but uh, you know the the one example of, of was referenced earlier the uh, CCEMC grand challenge which has been up and running for two years well supported by the other LCIA members and uh, just recently you've seen the announcement of the uh, COSIA uh, Carbon X Prize and these are companion activities that are out there and uh, with, with the LCIA in place we're working these in a collaborative fashion rather than these things appearing as if they're uh, competitive uh, initiatives so there's an example there. Uh, the other example that uh, is, is pending. Uh, the, the real part of this example is that uh, what we've tried to do with uh, relationships within LCA is where it makes sense to formalize uh, some of the linkages. So Heather and I are bonded at the hip now. An MOU has been signed between CCEMC and SDTC. And what does that look like? Well, we believe between the two of us, and we are big fund partners here, that combining our forces, we can actually release more funds than we would separately to take on those bigger projects that I was talking about. We're talking about project funding now that can take you up into the 50, 60 million dollar range. And that's the kind of heft you have to have to get the uh, large scale demonstration plants running to prove out technology. So there's an example of uh, real, real things happening within LCIA. And also an opportunity to simplify things for our entrepreneurs. Um, it's not, it wouldn't be the first time I've heard that our application is a bit of a bear, um, but I also hear the same thing about yours, Paul. So, <laughs> um, so we're looking at opportunities to, uh, to look at how we can optimize that um, so that we are able to still have the accountability and the, and the rigor in our processes, but to make it basically easier for technology developers to provide, our, provide solutions to us that we can make investments in to deliver um, on these low carbon uh, economy objectives. I know it's never satisfying to uh, cut things off, but I think oh, we yes. need to move on. And so I'm going to suggest, as Carol Ann has suggested, that uh, during the network break and so on, uh, please approach uh, the members of LCIA, me included, since we are a part of the LCIA, and ask us any questions you would like. But we need to move on. And so with that, please uh, join me in thanking our great panel.